Yeah, so I think the easiest way to quickly understand PDD is just contrasting it with traditional software development. Um, so this visual is a very high level workflow for what that looks like, traditional software development. Typically, developer receives some requirements that they hopefully were involved in generating as well. Um, and then they go off and they iterate with, in their IDE locally, write some code, test it out, see how it's working, tinkering around with it, get the code to a spot where they're happy with it, and then they submit it for a review. That either comes back mm -hmm. with some feedback or it gets accepted by the team and it gets merged. Pretty straightforward. That's how most software development works. If we were to contrast that with PDD, there's a couple different steps. So we start the same way. Um, receive some requirements. And then the next thing we would do is new, we would break those down into prompts. So instead of going to code, we're thinking in the, in the context of prompts. So I'm trying to build a feature that does X. How would I go about building that feature? What are the small incremental steps that I would take to scaffold that feature up and to make it reality? That's the type of thinking you're doing when you're breaking it down into prompts. Um, and then from there, when you're happy with your prompts, you would literally paste those into an LLM one at a time to get the necessary code written. What I like to use is an LLM native IDE. My preference is Cursor. There's a bunch out there, Windsurf, Lovable, mm -hmm. Bolt, V0, and so on. I'm a Cursor person, so I'm pasting the prompts into Cursor's Composer feature. And then I'm iterating with Cursor, right? It writes some code, I test it out locally, I read the code, review it, make sure I generally understand what's going on. And then when I get it to a spot where I'm happy with it, I would send it off for review, commit to the repository and so on and move on.